Welcome back to Booze and the Rocks. My name is David Edwards, and today I'm going to use some chilies and some lime, and I'm going to make this the devil's horn. Mm mm, good. But first, this. All right, so let's get into this. Now, the devil's horn was invented by Roger Villalta in 2010 at the Banker's Bar in Barcelona, Spain. And I got this recipe from DiffordsGuide.com. And what I'll do is I'll put a link to that in the description. So please go check it out. All right, so while I was looking at this cocktail, I said, well, you know, let's try and find some history for it. And being 2010 as an invention, I had hoped that maybe there was some history. However, I couldn't find any. And then I went straight down the hill while looking for more stuff. And I came up into music and I love music. And I wanted to let you guys know where this, the international sign for rock and roll came from. Now the devil's horns first appears in 1966 on the release of the Beatles signal released in 1966, Yellow Submarine. Now in 1969, John Lennon is again doing this on the release of the Yellow Submarine album, which is the album which is all the music from the, their animated movie from 1966. But he reverses his symbol and removes the sum. Now, that same year, Coven released an album and two of their band members were using the same sign as John Lennon. In 74, Gene Simmons started using that, but he started using it with his thumb out as he was pointing towards the crowd in concert. But in 79, where it became really popular is where Ronnie Dio took over for Ozzy Osbourne in Black Sabbath, where Ozzy used to use peace symbols. Ronnie Dio started using the devil's horn because he didn't want to be a copycat of, uh, of Ozzy. And then, you know, just keep fast forwarding it. And it's used in multiple, multiple heavy metal records, albums, concerts. I remember my first Metallica concert in 1991 at the gardens in Toronto and probably the formative concert for me it was the first concert and you know I'm, I'm just liable to keep going so I'm gonna stop there and we're gonna get right into the cocktail okay um, if you like music history let me know in the comments down below but while you're at it if you're new to the channel please hit the subscribe button make sure you hit that bell notification so you get notified whenever I place a new video and smash that thumbs up button so the first thing of course we need is my shaking glass the next thing we need is some chili peppers. Now, Difford's Guide says you should use one thin slice of either jalapeno pepper or another chili pepper. I, however, like things a little spicy, so we're just gonna put in, yeah, maybe four thin small slices here. Now, he also says that we should muddle these very gently because we just wanna bring out the spice and the flavor. If we muddle it too hard, it'll become really bitter and really strong. So the next thing, of course, we need is three raspberries. Looking good so far. Now, he used a seven-year-old Cavana Club rum in there, but I don't have any, but I do have some Gosling's dark rum here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put two ounces into our drink. Two ounces is 60 milliliters. We also need three quarters of an ounce of cranberry juice. And this will give us some of our really, really red color. And it'll also change the flavor slightly and enhance and highlight the flavors of the raspberry. We also need one ounce of honey syrup. And this is a one-to-one -one honey syrup one part honey, one part water. And of course we need lime juice. And we need one ounce of this or 30 mils. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little bit of ice to our shaker tin and we're gonna shake this for a good 10 to 15 seconds. Yes, look at that. Now, the glass that we're going to use, of course, for this, you can use whatever glass you want. However, his recipe calls or shows a martini glass. Okay. 
I like martini glasses. They're nice, they're kind of beautifully elegant shaped. It's a classic look. So what we're going to do is we're going to fine strain this because we wanna make sure we get all the little chunks out. And we get this nice devil red color. Okay. But we're not done, we need to garnish this. And garnishing this is important because this will give us our look. So what we wanna do is we wanna take two chilies that are bent, trim the stems slightly, just so they're not sticking out. And we're going to arrange them in a way that with a small cut in two different spots, that we can create the shape of devil's horns. Or somebody can create the shape of devil's horns because apparently I'm not very good at that. Ha <laughs> look at that. Now that is a nice fiery red drink that matches my shirt and is taking me straight to hell. Oh yes. It is very close to gorgeous, I do say. Let's take a sniff. So you don't really notice the chili smell coming up. You get a little bit of the sweetness from the raspberry. I can definitely smell the raspberry from the three raspberries there. Let's try it. Oh, that is good. The rum is just coming through nicely. You get the lime, you get a little bit of the raspberry. There's just a little heat of chili. Oh, and you know what? If you like things a little spicier, I would definitely go with this. Add a little bit more chili. Try it with a couple of other different chilies and tell me what you think. Leave that down in the uh, comments down below, please. Oh, yeah. Mm. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave the ingredients and the method of how to make this down in the description down below. If this is your first time to my channel, please hit the subscribe button and make sure you uh, hit that bell notification. That way, every time you I, I put up a video, you'll be notified. But if you don't like spicy things or a drink that looks that devilish, hit the thumbs down button twice and we'll see you next time. If you want me to do it or do one with it, you know. All right, so let's get into it. The Devil's Hone was created by 